Okay, we're live. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you guys so much for uh, for uh, tuning in. Uh, this is uh, Glissa's uh, virtual meeting of the semester. Uh, my name is Allison. I'm president. And this is Amanda, our web admin. And, Hi. And Alicia, our, uh, our secretary. Our uh, vice president, um, she, yeah, she's out, she, she's out of town for right now. She, she'll be back uh, next week. By the meantime, you get to know the three of us. Like our, our first comment is, do we need a mic? Uh, no, Matthew, we're good as is. Uh, if you guys have any questions or any comments, feel free to drop them by on the comments. Um, we, we, we can see them and we'll answer them as best as we can accordingly. But before we get started, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start our presentation. Let's see. Let me see if I can, here you go. Okay, all right, can you guys see this? All right, Oops, sorry, <laughs> sorry, technical difficulties. Okay. All right, does everyone see this? You can see it. Can you make it full screen or no? Will that mess it up? Well, let, me, let me go ahead and do that. And then I'm, I might have to escape though just to keep track of the comments, but. Okay. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll just come out every two slides. So, better? Yes. Awesome. So, we're going, so this won't be too long. We just wanted to give everyone a get to know. So, first things first, for some of y'all, you might be new. So, what does it take to be a member of Glissa? It's really, it's really just two requirements. You need to be first things first uh, enrolled at uh, at TWU in the School of Library and Information Science. You have to be in our program, and the second requirement is that you have to be an ALA member. And the good thing about being a graduate student, though, is that ALA does have joint membership deals. Like you, you pay, I think, pretty close to like like half than the usual rate, I believe. And, and really, and, and after you meet those two requirements, you just go on ahead and apply for membership on our website. I put the, U, the URL here, sites.google.com slash view slash TWU Glissa. And you'll find it on our homepage. I know the URL is, um, is a bit long, but it's, it, it's easy. And sorry, I kind of zoomed it up there, but, but yeah, so this is our URL. In the in the meantime, in the meantime, let let's get to know all the officers. The first person we have up is Alicia. And before uh, Alicia starts, uh, Alicia, for our icebreaker, do you want to give us an unpopular book opinion? Um, I feel put on the spot right now. <laughs> <laughs> or what you're reading currently? That applies to. Uh, could you could you repeat the question? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, I'm so sorry, guys. What happened? I'm, oh no, I, I keep accidentally zooming back here. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I keep zooming back in here. But uh, yeah, if you if you want, you could also put like, what are you currently reading or planning on reading? Um, I'm, I'm currently reading Octavia Butler, Mind of My. Mind is the name of it. Um, I thought it was a standalone book, but it made me part of the series, so I have to read the entire series now. Oh. But um, it's a science fiction book, and I'm just getting into it and trying to decide how I feel about it. But I don't think I can make up my mind until I completely read the series. So yeah, yeah, I I've read Octavia Butler before. She's really good. Like a, a standalone book that is really good is Kindred. Mm. It's very, very brutal. Okay. I gotta warn you. It's um, but another one is uh, she has some short story collections that are really good too. If you if you're mm. starting to read, she's she's awesome. Like she's really underrated as a writer, I think. Yeah, but let me uh No, I heard she's really good, so I'm like, I have to read this. So. Yeah, so you want to tell us about yourself? Mm -hmm. Um, 
Are we gonna have the slides back up? Yep, I have it right up. Okay, my name is Alicia Dill. Um, it's actually supposed to be Alicia Dill Unzu because I got married in February, but I have not been able to change my name because of the pandemic. Um, but I am in my third semester in the MLS program, and I'm interested in becoming an academic librarian, either as a subject reference librarian or um, in collections management and cataloging. I haven't decided yet. And um, I have previous degrees in criminal justice, but um, I decided that I would prefer to teach in a library setting as opposed in a classroom setting because of a previous experience teaching at a community college. <laughs> um, and I, I won't go into detail about that. Um, and hobbies, I like, of course, reading, listening to my husband sing, traveling and hiking and camping and spending time with my niece and nephew and making jewelry and crafts. And I'll read just about anything but favorites or anything by Daphne Dumar, um, the Nancy Drew series, um, The Outsiders by Essie Hinton is a favorite and fantasy and sci-fi novels, nonfiction, historical fiction, that kind of thing. So. Awesome. So next we have Amanda Crowe. You want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, I'll do the icebreaker. Mm -hmm. um, my unpopular book opinion is that currently I'm listening to Where the Crawl Dads Sing and I'm just not a fan of it. And then Allison sent me a link about the author and now I'm even more not a fan of it. So if you did like that book and you haven't heard about the author and her shady past in Africa, you should definitely look into it because it was really interesting. Yeah, um, uh, you can find it on a slate. I did a whole article about it. It is, it's, it's, uh, it's a circus. <laughs> yes, and um, so I live in Dallas right now and I have my Bachelor of Arts in English Literature and I, for, I did teach for a little bit, but I didn't really like it. And so then I thought of, I should, I've always thought about being a librarian. And then I was like, well, I guess I should. So I, um, that's why I'm here. And I do want to do academic librarianship, but I'm not sure yet what focus. And currently I work at a community college in Dallas as a program coordinator in the continuing education department, just over the community and IT classes. And it's okay, but I think, you know, librarian would be more uh, fun, rewarding, fulfilling, um, more up my alley. And some of my hobbies are cuddling my cats, Lord Stark and Ghost, um, crafts, wine and spicy cocktails. My husband makes really good um, cocktails, so he's always making something new for me. Uh, traveling, watching TV shows, and of course reading. And my favorite books are Harry Potter series, The Night Circus, and The Count of Monte Cristo. And I'm currently reading the Southern Book Club's Glide to Slaying Vampire. It's in or I'm actually listening to it on tape, but oh. it's interesting. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. I'll just say that I haven't decided if I like it or not yet. Mm -hmm. Definitely different because it's not your usual kind of like cheesy vampire book. Oh, is it like a is it like a paranormal romance kind of book or? It's not a romance at all, oh, and okay. um, the vampire is not in any way like someone that you he you do not like. You do not begin to feel sorry for him or like him. And his fangs are the most disgusting description. They're like described as like cockroach legs. Oh God. <laughs> it's, it's so gross. But anyways, it's it's an interesting it's it's interesting. It takes place over the course of several years in this small, small southern town and mm. yeah. But, okay, yeah, that's gonna get me nightmares for the next few nights. <laughs> but but uh, points for originality. So. Yeah, it was definitely original. Yeah, so, 
So I'm next. Um, so my name is Allison. Right, I'm interested in actually working as both a reference and cataloging librarian in a public library. That's what I'm interested in. Now, I don't mind, you know, if I am. Now, those are usually small libraries, from what I understand, I do that, where you have a combo of reference and cataloging. But, you know, I won't say no if there's something that's solely for cataloging and or solely for reference. I really do enjoy that. And I just want to keep my options <laughs> open. And cataloging and reference have both become two passions of mine going to school. So I had a, I have an English degree. I was originally going to be a, a high school teacher, and then and while I was student teaching, though, I, I was working at a library, and then I was like, you know what? I like the library world better, and so I chose to attend TWU and decide not to pursue my certification. So my hobby, I like to read, uh, read, of course. I like to write and, and draw novels and comic books. Like I, I wanted to be an animator when I was a kid and I used to do storyboarding a lot as a kid and that just turned into making comics. I, um, I, you know, I love to paint and, you know, illustrate and, and um, I can't believe I said comic books twice, but that just show you how much I love that. I like to cook too, like Great British Bake Off is like one of my favorite shows of all time. And I like experimenting with makeup. So my favorite authors and are um, Angela Carter, Clyde Barker, Alicia Lai, Courtney Milan, Sarah Rose Smith is a recent one, really cool. And uh, Caitlin R. Tiernan. I like to read a lot of horror, fantasy, romance, or any combination. Now for my unpopular book opinion, I was just telling uh, the girls like earlier today, I'm realizing that I do not like most uh, first person uh, narratives. I really like, it just drives me wild. And like, and I read romance novels too, but I really hate reading the ones where like, like one, one person's point of view and then the next chapter is the point of view, which is weird because I'm okay with that in other genres, but for some reason, romance it just annoys me. But then again, it's usually because the love interest annoys me <laughs> sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. <laughs> but um, but yeah, yeah, I think I prefer, yeah, first person can be very awkward unless the writer is very talented, in my opinion. But, you know, I'm, I'm not saying, yeah, I'm not saying that all of them are like that. Uh, I think White Oleander was, was it was a pretty good book that did first person narrative pretty well. White Oleander by Janet Fitch. It's a really good book and very beautifully written. So moving on from that. So we've listed out our um, fall 2020 events. Now, today is the virtual club meeting and our, our deadline for treasurer is happening pretty soon, September 30th around um, now around um, October, probably late October, early November, we're going to do a fundraiser, which we'll get to a little more later on. And um, and we're likely gonna do a um, webinar either late November or early December. We're still discussing um, what topic we like to do. Right now, we're thinking of doing either an, an international librarian or teen services librarianship, or get in contact with uh, with someone that specializes in copyright. You know, we're we're going through these, and we're going to see um, what might, what, what's what's likely going to happen for uh, the webinar. And the final exams are December fifth, five through nine. And I'm sorry for reminding everyone of that, but that's that's it. Uh, we we won't have any activities for that week. We promise you. So, fundraising. So we. Well, actually, uh, uh, actually, uh, Alicia, Alicia Neal was the one that kind of found a lot of really great ideas. We're actually thinking of doing an activity where our members can get to decide what they want to do for fundraising. We, some ideas are craft and wine night, or making a recipe book. People submit a recipe book recipes because it's fall, and what's the point of fall if we can't eat? And, or a watch party. Etc. We'll get more details about that soon. Pro probably when uh, October, uh, the start of October, hopefully. 
And really, that's kind of our wrap up for a wrap up for today. But <laughs> I think you, I think you have another. You call someone else to have nightmare fuel. <laughs> That is the most original idea I've ever heard of a vampire. I will give you that. Very original idea. <laughs> but yeah, it was disgusting. Like it's described like the guy, like it's like these like leg, like tentacle leg cockroach looking things crawl out of his mouth and then they like go back down his throat. That's like how it's described in the book. Oh my god. This is like a Wes Craven movie or something, like a horror movie. <laughs> It's so gross. Oh, I. And there's also, in general, I don't like cockroaches at all, oh. at all. And there's another scene where a lady is hiding, and like she's hiding in the attic, and this cockroach crawls in her ear. And the the scene is a thousand times more descriptive than it needs to be, and it goes on and on. I'm and gonna on. put my tea away now. <laughs> But yeah, cockroaches are like my one of my big time fears. Like I was a lot more scared of them as a kid, but like I think one of my scariest experiences as a kid was one 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 cockroach like crawled across my leg and I looked out, I was like, I, I I could not walk in the living room for days. I would be like watching my feet as I go. Like I was like Ugh. <laughs> and um <laughs> I, I love horror, horror novels and movies too. I, I just like them cockroach free. <laughs> I, I, I just, no cockroaches, like anything else I'm fine with, but cockroaches. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, but this is a cockroach unfriendly zone. Unfriendly. <laughs> this is anti cockroaches, right? <laughs> I think that, and that's gross. Yeah, that grosses me out. and. I, and I love horror stuff, but if it's also has to do with um, has someone like, you know, like getting getting scalped or something, I'm like, no, 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 no. I have this weird fear of of something happening to your head. You're like, no, 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 no. I couldn't watch uh, the Saw movies because of that. I was like, no, 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 no. But. But yeah, so if anyone has any comments or questions, uh, feel free to share them over here. <laughs> I think we, yeah, I think we all have our, our big no-nos when it comes to fiction in general. <laughs> I um, Cockroaches is one of them <laughs> for me. But, but yeah, if anyone, oh. <laughs> oh my God, that is, <laughs> So, so it was 3 a.m. one time. I have all I have all these traumatic stories about roaches. So I'm, I'm from a very rural <laughs> a country area, and roaches just really have no effect on me, except I just do not want them in the house taking over the kitchen or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I mean, I'm used to it roaches, like those big wood roaches and stuff. I'm used to that kind of thing. I've had, I lived in a house with where we had frogs, scorpions, snakes, um, all kinds, spiders, all kinds of spiders, everything. They just cropped up lizards. Find them randomly in the house. It's just from living in the country. It's, you know, typical. Yeah, yeah I'm I, I'm sorry, but I'm a wuss. I'm <laughs> Actually, the only pests that I would tolerate are mice, because I think mice or little like rodents are are adorable, which drives everyone else insane. We had um, you know, we accidentally a possum accidentally snuck into my workplace, and I was like, oh my god, that's so cute. <laughs> Possums are so cute. They are adorable, and if you ever look up the Australian possums. You ever hear that um, you, that joke, you know, like everything in Australia is scarier? Apparently, Australian possums are even cuter than American possums. What? <laughs> yeah. They, I'm going to have to look it up like right now. <laughs> yeah. There's a cute little, there was this cute little meme where apparently uh, a possum snuck into an Australian bakery and ate all the scones and had his little belly all rounded out. <laughs> look, oh, look my cute. gosh. It was adorable. I'm still not going to Australia because they have giant spiders, but 
it's a, it's a trade off. Yeah, when I when I was eight, no, I was twelve. I uh, it was three a.m. and I was trying to be very quiet because my parents were asleep and there was a roach on the couch and I tried to spray it and then it flew. It flew at me and I screamed and ended up waking up my parents anyway, mm-hmm. and and annoy and annoying them, but. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't trust flying roaches. I feel like that that was an evolutionary prank. That was an evolutionary prank. Like, oh, let's mess with their psycho with their psychology more. But, <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah. If anyone has any questions or comments, I think we're gonna wrap up. But we did want to give a little, like, a, a little, like, hey, these, this is these are the faces <laughs> behind uh, Glissa. You know we're 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 not computers, <laughs> even though you mostly see our graphics. But mm-hmm. but yeah, and if you and if you if you if any of y'all have any suggestions or like comments, okay. like you know you could always you know email us, um, message us on Facebook, um, like like I mean I think yeah I think you can like um message me on Facebook if you see my profile as one of the admins. Like I'm I'm all for. Uh, yeah, I'm all I'm all for like talking to people, mostly because I know that with this online program, like uh, your phone cups and a t- and a wire, you're like I'm here, I'm here too, but but yeah, so we just want to give you a little introduction, and and we hope that you guys join us for the rest of the fall semester. I know it's been very hard, especially with this pandemic, because. Oh, here you go. Oh yeah, it's gonna be happening around, we're still setting up. Uh, it's gonna be happening around late October, like maybe around Halloween time, but not on Halloween because we don't want to disturb anyone's Halloween time because Halloween is the most important holiday of the year. I mean, it's Halloween, let us have some joy this year, <laughs> but. But yeah, it's going to be uh, late October, early November. It's going to be the time range for that one. All right. Thank you for asking, Anita. All right. Is right. Let's see. It's, is there anyone else that has any questions? Let's see. I'm going to give it, I'm going to give another minute. Let's see. And see. Do you have any questions about the treasure application hint hint we we still yeah we still have our election up for that you if you still want if you're still interested be sure to apply um it's actually yeah you should find our a a, a link to the application which is in google form on uh, facebook or on our uh, website and and i i know that i guess when people hear treasure they think oh you have to be an accounting wizard (laughs) No, it's 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 a pretty to the point kind of position, and and if you're yeah, and if you're if you're still curious about it, like um, you you don't have to only do financial stuff. We do a lot of we do a lot of different other parts. Uh, they we our positions we don't like say like oh you're only supposed to do A and B and C. You can't do D. It's more like um, you have some main responsibilities, but you can uh, un- what's the phrase? You can um. Uh, you can go, you can check out other stuff too. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I read a lot, but I, I know nothing about the proper phrases. <laughs> but yeah, so I think we're gonna wrap it up around 25 minutes. All right, if anyone has any questions or comments, say them now or forever hold your peace. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think, I think we scared people away with talking about cockroaches. So. <laughs> but um, yeah, anyway, thanks everyone for uh, joining in. We're gonna go ahead and end this broadcast. Um, the good thing about this, it, uh, it's gonna be recorded on YouTube. So you should definitely uh, be, you should be able to definitely check it out from there on a later time. All right, thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. There we go.